So just some examples of uh, referral sites for different visceral pains, esophageal pain, maybe uh, retrosternal or radiating to the back, gastric and small bowel pain, maybe uh, felt in the epigastrium or right upper quadrant and then radiating to the back, colon uh, pain may be along the site of the area of the colon that's involved and also radiate into the back. The liver and gallbladder is usually in the right uh, upper quadrant and may radiate around to the back between the scapula and the right shoulder. Pancreatic pain may be uh, predominantly um, epigastric uh, but often with um, colon pain may be uh, experienced along the line of the uh, area of colon that's involved, uh, for example, um, uh, ascending colon pain would be felt uh, on the right side and can radiate into the back. Uh, pain coming from the liver uh, or the biliary tract is usually felt in the right upper quadrant but can radiate uh, round to the back between the scapula and the right shoulder. Pancreatic pain which can be extremely severe, uh, usually starts off anteriorly and can be epigastric, uh, but that can radiate into the right and left hypochondriums and then classically radiate almost straight through uh, into the back uh, in the midline. Now, a different sort of pain is neuropathic pain. Classically, one wants to get a, a, a history of a, a burning or shock-like pain. And this is actually caused by spontaneous and paroxysmal discharges in the peripheral and central nervous system. You may have uh, problems with uh, brachial and lumbar sacral plexopathies. These may be because of uh, breast and lung cancer in the brachial plexus and uh, cervical and rectal um, cancers involving the lumbar sacral plexus. The treatment for uh, nerve pain uh, is once again with standard, standard uh, analgesics including opioids. These are used in conjunction with other co-analgesics uh, such as tricyclic antidepressants or anticonvulsants and in some situations nerve blockade. So early on uh, you can get problems with nerve uh, compression pain. Um, this is common in cancer and occurs in the early stages of plexopathies and metastatic vertebral disease. Pain uh, is often dermatomal uh, in distribution and is generally more opioid responsive than when the nerve goes on to nerve injury pain. Um, it certainly is potentially reversible if the cause of the pressure or compression on the nerve can be uh, reversed or treated. For example, if a patient has radiotherapy uh, and shrinkage of, of the tumour off the uh, nerves that are causing the problems with pain. Nerve injury pain, on the other hand, uh, can be associated with treatment or nerve infiltration by the cancer. So this actually denotes a more intimate involvement between the cancer and, and the nerve structures. So treatment causes can include um, surgery such as post thoracotomy uh, syndromes or post mastectomy syndromes, chemotherapy uh, causing um, peripheral neuropathies that become significant and painful uh, and also to a much less common degree radiation induced um, plexopathies. So damaged nerves may uh, exhibit hyperexcitability, spontaneous activity and an expanded receptive field causing significant issues with pain. Peripheral nerve injuries uh, may not necessarily be associated just with uh, malignant disease but often the pain is, is um, burning or stinging or shooting uh, and it's uh, associated with a neurodermatomal distribution. Uh, there may be uh, allodynia and hyperalgesia are associated with the pain. Spontaneous stabbing pain is perhaps less common as is an aching pain. Sympathetic pain is, uh, is different again and it's, it's not a common pain to, that we, we see in patients with advanced malignant disease. The issue is that the pain distribution is actually vasotopographic as, op as, as opposed to um, dermatomal.
it's usually associated with some sensory disorder and it's important to remember that uh, neural injury or history of major injury to the nerve uh, is not necessary. In causal terms it helps to think of irritation and or stimulation of regional sympathetic nerves rather than a precise injury to those nerves. So sympathetically maintained pain is usually burning or squeezing. It's caused by sympathetic somatic afferent nociceptor interaction. These sorts of pains used to be called reflex sympathetic dystrophies and are now called, uh, called um, uh, complex regional pain syndromes. And the treatment for sympathetic uh, nerve pain is sympathetic blockade. So uh, chemical um, sympathectomy is the way to go. We know that um, uh, in those patients that the normal drugs are not uh, all that useful. When a patient comes to you uh, uh, with pain, what we have to do is accept the patient's description of the pain. And obviously that it's important to get the history. So... Uh, an initial careful assessment is important with their history, examination and then appropriate investigations for that area. If a patient has a number of pains, then we need to look at the cause of those pains. Now, they may all be due to bone pain, for example, in a patient who has um, advanced um, prostate cancer, but we need to be fairly clear in our own minds about that. So as I mentioned previously, often patients with advanced cancer have an average of about three pains. It's important to assess the extent of the patient's um, disease and not just for pain but for other reasons uh, as well, um, particularly in terms of um, prognosis. It's important to assess other factors that may influence the pain, what their social um, setting is, what cultural beliefs and spiritual beliefs the patient may have. And it's important to reassess um, the patient's pain once we've got some treatment going. And that applies for any symptom, no matter what we're treating. There are different pointers to the pain history. This particular group of words to help one remember where, where you're going with a pain history is just one form of getting you to remember the questions to ask. It's important to ask the nature of the pain, and often that's very difficult for the patient because they've got to actually interpret their own pain. But there are other important things like the intensity, where the pain is, how long the patient's had the pain, the duration. Is it started or stopped by anything in particular or does it occur with other symptoms? Is there something particularly that makes the pain worse? For example, weight bearing. Is there something that makes the pain better? Perhaps eating some food if they've got abdominal pain. Um, does the pain actually go anywhere? So they may have epigastric pain, does, but does it radiate there? How often are they getting the pain and when did they first get problems with the pain? There's the PQRST system for looking at characteristics of pain, so palliative factors, quality, which is similar to nature, of course, the radiation of pain, the severity, and temporal factors, such as is it associated with something else, what brings the pain on, what turns the pain off. It's important to get a good uh, analgesic history um, because before you start prescribing, uh, medications, you need to know what the patient has been on. So get uh, a list of, of the drug or drugs that they've been taking, the dose, the route of administration, how often are they taking the drugs, how long have they been on the drugs, uh, and obviously what benefits and side effects they're getting from the drugs um, as well. Now to help us with monitoring the patients, um, there are pain assessment tools and they can be as uh, simple or as complex as you like. There's the use of categorical um, scales and the simplest and probably most widely used is the four point system. So no pain, mild pain, moderate pain and severe pain. And you can add excruciating, that is number 10 to this scale as well. So if you take out the number 10 and the zero, the, the no pain, uh, then you're left with mild, moderate and severe. And that uh, would be similar to 1, 2 and 3, 4, 5 and 6 for moderate and 7, 8 and 9 for severe pain. So anyone who, who has severe pain and then gives a visual analogue scale out of 10, of uh, seven or eight, you, you know that they understand what you're talking about in terms of getting across the severity of their pain.